What's up, man? Thanks for coming, Will. Yeah, no problem. Right. What's up? So this is Will Friendrice. Uh, he is a student at Texas A&M. He's a friend of mine. Um, yeah, let him know a little bit about yourself, Will. Uh, hi, I'm a math major as well. Um, I know Synthesia is more statistics focused, but I'm more focused on uh, pure math and some other theoretical results. Um, I actually did a research project with Synthesia our, in the summer after my freshman year. We got our paper published, which was really cool. Uh, and since then, I've done two other research projects in completely different fields. Um, my main research goal right now is to get a wider breadth of mathematics before I too apply to graduate school. Um, we're the same age, but he's graduating early, and uh, I'm not, so I got I got another year. Uh, so the reason I brought Will on here is because he's <laughs> very experienced with uh, research and just like academic stuff in general. He's taking a couple like graduate courses um, that he's you know like doing well in. He enjoys, and that's pretty much why I wanted to bring him on to kind of like share some knowledge or some insight on you know how to approach mathematics and whatnot. Yeah, glad to be here. All right. So uh, first I want to talk about, so there are two main things that I wanted to talk to you about. And the first one being like research, mm -hmm. um, kind of like your approach to research. And then the second one being uh, academics, like more generally. And that could be like through the lens of mathematics or whatever. Okay. Um, so maybe which one do you think we should start with? Like academics or research? Um, well, we're already on the topic. Why don't we start with research and then we can go back into academics and I can talk a little bit about the ways that I make sure I succeed. Sure. So, like, what is your uh, experience with research so far? Like, how did you get into it? Like, what is research in your opinion? Um, pretty much, let's start there. All right, um, so this is actually, I've had a very different experience than a lot of the viewers might have had, uh, especially if they're in different majors. So as a math major, research is a lot more accessible, and um, the math departments that you might go to when you go attend college are gonna be a lot more accessible than, say, engineering departments or biology departments, because it's just so small. Mm -hmm. um, my experience is that as a math, um, this is pretty much with anything. If you want to do like actual research and get involved in the theory of it, you're going to have to take a few prerequisite courses before you can. I know in math, you have to take linear algebra and differential equations. Mm -hmm. um, at least at my university, that's like the very base level. If you've mm -hmm. taken that, then you'll succeed in whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, so that's how that's how I got into research is I finished those classes and then emailed the research director, research research director, excuse me, at my home institution. Uh, uh, his name is Matt Young. He's a famous number theorist, actually. He's written a lot of papers. He's a cool guy. Um, I emailed him. I said, "Hey, is anyone looking for undergraduates to do research with?" And turns out that uh, someone was, and that's how Sathesia and I both got in. Um, mm -hmm. Is that how you got into that research group, by the way? Yeah, so I reached out to one of my former professors, uh, Dr. Satile. We had Will and right, we yes, had him. Right, yeah. yes. And uh, he kind of, I was like, oh, I really want to get into research. And at that time, I had taken like linear algebra and differential equations, are the, which are the ones that we I took differential to. equations together. Yes, right? yes, yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah yes, we did. Uh, and uh, after that, he kind of pointed to me to Dr. Liu. Um, yes, Dr. Wen Kai Liu was our research mentor, the first research project we did, mm -hmm. which was sort of about. Um, a discrete analog of a linear operator that you see in a lot in physics, especially with um, mass spring systems. Right, right. So, so that was at least my first research experience. Um, we did that over the summer, and that kind of continued on for like about a year. Right? Yeah, so we did most of the work in the, uh, this has sort of been my experience with some of these summer projects, is that you do most of the work in the summer, and by the time school rolls around, uh, a lot of the people have other obligations to do. So in the fall, I know that I spent um, a few hours a week doing research, but most of my work was focused towards um, being successful with my schoolwork. Uh, the research process can kind of drag on if you're trying to get your paper published because um, you'll send in the paper, then months later you'll hear back, oh, it didn't get in, so you try somewhere else, then months later you hear back, hear back oh, we'll accept it if you make these edits. So, um, and this is, I'm pretty sure it's true of all science fields. So this, yeah, you, you, sometimes, even if you think you're done, it's still a long road before you can get your results published. Right, and that applies to our research as well, right? Right, we, we got it, it got published, I think, last November, and we started in May of 2020. Right, yeah, so that's a long, really a pretty long process, and we had the bulk of it done, you know, in the summer and whatnot, yeah. Right. Um, and then we sent it to a paper, to or a journal to be published, and then they sent us the revisions to be made. Right, and, and it took them quite a while. Right, and that was a pretty like lucky one, I guess, because you know we made like the one revision and they accepted it. Right, yeah, it was it was it was actually a quick experience. But one thing I want to um, clarify is that I don't think that research is the value of research is based on whether or not you get your name in a journal. 
It's really not. I've done um, different research experiences and um, fortunately all of mine have been accepted to journals and I am a published mathematician and I'm something I'm really proud about. Um, but I know a lot of RUs that I'm applying to, they don't really focus on that. They don't focus on necessarily original research. You have to write a paper. Um, you, your research experience can be an awesome one without ever, ever doing anything uh, original. You can, I know specifically, there's a couple of research programs where you, it's sort of like a directed reading program again, where you write a paper or give a presentation. That's more expository rather than creating original results. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the directed reading program, and so you did that before enrolling in any sort of research. Yeah, so after I got out of high school, I was like, well, high school, I didn't get into some of the Ivy Leagues that I applied to, so I was like, you know what, well, I'm going to be crazy with research, I'm going to be crazy ambitious, and I'm going to be have the drive to succeed in college and do these things that I want to do. So before I could do research, I did some what I call pre-research activities. Um, one of those was a directed reading program. Uh, these are kind of rare. I don't know if they have them at every home institution. But even if you don't have a specific one, you could probably set one up. Uh, you work with a graduate student to learn something in math that you might have not necessarily had the ability to learn otherwise uh, in your curriculum. So like, I learned about um, triangulations, which is not like trying to find positions, it's more um, an abstract geometric object. And that was what I did in my first semester. And at the end I gave a presentation about it. And it was a really great um, introduction into the day in the life of a graduate student and learning about um, ways that, like some of the math that they see in their studies. And when you were doing the directed reading program, you were, that's when you were finishing up like linear algebra and differential equations, I think. Yes, while I was doing the prerequisites I needed for some like original research, I was doing um, this directed reading program. And then after that, what, uh, I think there was a, you had some research experience where you started uh, something like right before the program with Dr. Liu, right? Yeah, so um, that was the COVID summer, so I had a lot of free time. Um, mm -hmm. This was, I actually started it right after. Um, I did the program with Satish and Dr. Liu through my home institution, and then because all these RUs got canceled that we had applied to because of the virus and stuff, um, I applied to what was called the Polymath RU, which was a brand new inaugural program, which was, the, the focus of which was to make sure that people who didn't get accepted to RUs or people who RUs got canceled would be able to participate in math research over the summer. That was a little bit different of an experience for me. Um, I'll go into that. I mean, my group just really honestly lost interest. A lot of the members in my group stopped coming to meetings, stuff like that over the summer. So the bulk of the work was done um, with me and maybe one or two other students and then my research mentor in like the, the the dog days of summer, like late August and early September. Um, that was a that one was a very I I learned a lot of resilience from that project because I have had to overcome a lot of challenges. We couldn't prove our original conjecture, and then we found a, finally found a version of it that I was able to uh, show. And then um, our paper got denied from the first journal we sent it to, so we sent it to another one, and it recently just got accepted mm -hmm. two years later. So um, it, that, that's another important lesson on perseverance in right. research because it, it's not always going to work out and that's okay. And even if it never does work out, then that's fine. But if you keep persevering, the likelihood that it will work out goes up. Mm -hmm. And like, would you agree that um, the perseverance is maybe more important than anything for these type of projects? Because you know, the, you know, it's kind of difficult to do research, right? Research isn't easy. I mean, you're you're really it's really puts you out of your comfort zone because you're learning things that you've never learned before. And I know, especially I didn't argue last summer like an NSF funded one. And it was really difficult um, n knowing nothing about this topic I was researching and trying to do original work on at the beginning of summer. And you spend a couple days learning about it, but like, it's it's jarring, it really is. It's It can be scary, it's not an easy thing. It definitely puts you out of your comfort zone, but once you get into the hang of it, like it's one of the most fulfilling experiences a human being can do. Mm -hmm. And what has your experience been like with like presenting that research now that you've done it a couple times? Yeah, um, so we did it, we presented at the uh, TXLA. Um, undergraduate Undergraduate, conference. yes, correct, thank you. Um, which was a, a local conference between the University of Houston, uh, LSU, and uh, A&M. And so we presented there, that was an online conference. And then I presented my other research project at the joint mathematics meeting um, that following January. Uh, that was a really cool experience, uh, seeing all these projects from different people and seeing some of the, the breadth of mathematics and places that other people can do their research. Uh, being able to effectively communicate your research is very important, especially in a field like mathematics, which can get really theoretical and really inaccessible at some points. 
So um, I, I definitely learned a lot of great presentation skills from that. Mm -hmm. And I think that pretty much covers all the bases or bases for research. Right? All right. Yeah. So what what, kind, what sort of academic questions did you have? So for academics, I guess generally, you know, everybody has to take math at some point, right? Mm -hmm. In college, most people have to take math. Um, so what have you kind of, because I feel like, I mean, speaking to the audience, like Will Friendrice is, I think even more than just like naturally brilliant, like you, you work really hard, right? You put in a bunch of hours. You have to, especially yeah. in college. Like, like think, I, I appreciate the compliment, but I wouldn't be where I am without putting in hours and hours and hours of work to make sure I not only can do the math problems and the homework, but I can do the challenge problems to make sure I understand what's going on, to make sure I can close my eyes and see the functions moving around. Mm -hmm. And I think that marginal difference is what kind of like adds up over time. It right? does, it really does. Putting in a, an extra, I don't know, even 10 minutes of work a night, like it, it can make such a huge difference and you'll be able to explain it better because you can have a better intuitive picture of what the math is actually doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that applies to, you know, all sorts of fields. Um, Absolutely. Whether you're a biologist mm -hmm. or like, for example, for me, for statistics classes, it's not always about getting the A. Um, it's always like, I think a really good byproduct is getting the A, but really understanding what you're doing. And if you can actually like, you know, kind of like make yourself care about it, then you'll put in a lot more effort. And that's, that's actually a great point because that's a, that's like one of the main things that I've noticed about the graduate classes I'm taking. I don't have any tests in these classes. Everyone in the class gets an A or a B. Like it's not gonna hurt your grade by taking it, but if you, you, what you gain out of it is what you put into it. If you do the homework, which is the only sort of system of grading, and if you really spend some time learning the material, you'll get a great reward out of it, which is just personal knowledge, because that's what school is. It's supposed to be about education. It's not supposed to be about getting a degree. Mm -hmm. And one of the kind of like surprising things about going to you know a, a large public school was that um, you know you have a great experience like in these introductory classes, but even in these advanced classes, you'll still find usually a lot of people that um, are like really trying. Like for example, Will, um, like we met freshman year in this uh, in this math class about proving things. Just like yeah, our, our one of the very first college class I ever went to, I met him, and mm -hmm. it was a really cool experience. Yeah, and that was like a pretty difficult class, um, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people that are really trying their best, and you know you'll be pushed, and you definitely want to try your best as well in those classes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then what, so you've been taking some graduate courses in mathematics, yes. um, mm -hmm. and like, what was that process like, I guess, like, have you finished your undergraduate courses? Um, yeah, so what, it's a really, it's a really weird, um, like middle ground between finishing your undergrad and, uh, being ready for graduate school. Um, I personally could have graduated, uh, undergraduate, maybe a semester or two early. Um, I chose not to because I didn't want to put such a heavy workload on those last few semesters, and I really wanted to... Um, be able to stay with the community that I was in. Um, so what I had done is I had not necessarily finished my undergraduate um, courses. I'm still taking a bunch of undergraduate classes, even in the math department. I have some requirements to fill, um, but I had the enough prerequisites because I came in with some credits to be able to take some graduate courses. Um, the graduate courses I'm taking, if you know anything about math, it's in complex analysis. Uh, one tip that I would give is if you want to take a graduate class, take the undergrad version first so you sort of have an idea of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's a great uh, tip on like how to, I guess, push yourself um, in these sort of like spaces and these graduate classes, undergraduate classes. And if you can just like, you know, and kind of start to enjoy learning, then that'll definitely take you far. Yeah, that, that, that's the biggest takeaway from all of this is like if you if you really enjoy learning, then you have to also pair that with the drive, the ambition and the willingness to work a little bit extra to learn. Mm -hmm. So to summarize um, some of the things that we've talked about today in terms of research, it's you want to kind of build your knowledge before starting you know, to attempt research. And one of the biggest things about it is you want to apply yourself, I guess, mm -hmm. um, give the best effort that you can for these things. Go outside of your comfort zone because if you don't, then you're never going to learn anything. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, even if you, you, know, you mess up, you fail, and it, it, research does get tough. Like it, You will fail at some point. You will fail. Yeah, you definitely will. Uh, everybody does at some point. Um, and you'll definitely learn a lot more, though. And that's kind of the most valuable thing about doing such things. If you're not failing, you're not being ambitious enough. Mm -hmm. That was a quote okay. from our friend Dylan. Okay. Dylan, <laughs> that, that quote, Dylan very well friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that, that pretty much covers it. And in terms of academics, uh, we talked about you really need to apply yourself, um, even if it's you know beyond just the grade point average. If you can uh, like 
you know, add on these marginal, this marginal understanding at each of your courses, then eventually you'll end up like our friend, William Friend. Very sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, where he just has a really strong, like foundational understanding of what's going on. Yeah, it, I, I can, I close my eyes and I see the math. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I, one day you were like, oh, you were you were going to sleep and then you were like, oh, I, I, I just figured this thing. That happened, I know, I, yeah. like you, you, you I, I, it sounds so corny, but I like, I literally see math. Like it's crazy, <laughs> it's crazy. Once you, once you take enough classes and once you apply yourself enough, you'll, you'll get such a good understanding of it that like, it's just second man, nature to you. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, no problem, absolutely. Really, yeah.